Good morning and welcome to the devotion this week. As September has come, we have changed our focus on the spiritual disciplines, and this month we will be talking about Scripture. Again, using the same format as we have, the first week we'll be talking in general about Scripture and how we can use it for our, our for us. We'll also be talking about an example where it was used in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament, and then in the last week we'll be talking more about how it's been used for us history. Having said that, when I think about Scripture and I think about it being a spiritual discipline, a lot of things come to my mind. I think, first of all, James 4.17. You've heard me speak it from the pulpit many times, but to him who knows what to do and doesn't do it, sin. It's a verse that's been ingrained in me since a kid, and I always think of it. The other is 1 Corinthians 10.31. Whatever you do, eat or drink. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. How is it I live my life? What am I doing? And those are the verses I fall back on. When I'm thinking about something in my heart that's really a spiritual battle, Psalm 119, 105 comes to mind. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We study Scripture so that we know Scripture, so that it's in our hearts, so that when times come that we can use Scripture to our advantage. When I think about temptations that we that I deal with all the time, I think a lot about the temptations of Christ. And I go to Matthew 4 and I read about the 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 temptations that Jesus went through himself. Not just was he here as a man, but he also went through temptations and he understands what happens. And we're told in Matthew 4, it says, The tempter came and said to him, If you're the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered, He said, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus replied to temptation with a verse from the Old Testament. So the devil took him into the holy city, and he had him stand upon a pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, his wi- he, he will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so you will not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus again, turning around, using scripture, says, On the other hand, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus continuously answered temptation with scripture. And the last time the devil does it in this passage, it says the devil again took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now, just as Jesus used temptation for scripture to overcome temptation that he was failed with, we need to be able to follow his example and do the same thing. And the only way we can do that is if we study scripture. If we don't ever study it, we'll never know it. If we never know it, we can never use it. And if we never use it, we miss out on a lot of blessings. I had someone say a couple months ago to me that they didn't agree with me on a passage that, that we had discussed in Sunday school. I asked them what the passage was. They explained to me why. And we realized that they had taken it totally out of context. No problem with it happens even to me. That's not a big deal. But a couple of weeks ago they came up to me and they made the same comment. They said, you know, we have taken sermon after sermon and we search out the scriptures when we get home to see if what we're being taught is right. It made me remember something from many years ago. When I graduated from college, I came back to Houston and I was a youth pastor in Humble, Texas. The church was Brean Baptist Church on Atosco Cedar Road. And I asked one time where they came up with the name Brean because it's, you know, I grew up Southern Baptist. It's always first, second, third Baptist church, whatever. But Berean, where'd you come up with that name? And they told me, read Acts 17, and then I'll know. So I read Acts 17, verses 10 through 12. It says, The brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they had arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now these were more noble-minded men than in Thessalonica. For they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, along with a number of prominent Greek women and men. What I'm trying to say is that if we study our scriptures and we look at what we're told, searching out the scriptures, we get to know the scriptures better. When temptation comes, when problems come along our way, we're ready. There's certain passages that can help us when we're feeling down or lonely or depressed. There's particular passages that we can read and and just be excited about reading when, when things are going good for us. Some passages can help us overcome temptation. Some can help clarify our own beliefs or refute a false teaching that we hear. 
whatever the reason, I can't think of any reason not to study the scripture. To open up the Bible and see what it says. It's a living word. It deals with everything we're currently dealing with in our current day life. It doesn't matter if this is the year 2020. It doesn't matter if it's year 501. It doesn't matter. The Bible is there for us for all times. So that's my plea this morning. I'm going to say this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Pull out your Bible. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. Meditate on the Bible. Use that Bible. And every day, use what you've learned to help in life. God had this Bible written for a reason. That was so that you would read it and use it. Get to know them better.